Hello, check. Yes, much better. If I start coughing, please forgive me. I have a very bad throat. Where's Jeffrey? There you are. Jeffrey, jump to the rescue. Good afternoon, everybody. How are you today? Yeah? Had a lovely lunch. Is everybody feeling a bit sleepy? You can say it. You can say it. Everybody's... We just have to dim the lights, Aarti, and everybody's going to take a nice snooze. Well, Jeff and I are not going to let you do that, and hopefully we have an exciting next 45 minutes for you. All right, everybody ready? Yes. Yeah? Okay, so before um, I get into the workshop, just a brief thing, and thank you again for our introduction, but I just want to add a few words about uh, where I'm from and what the organization does. So, um, as I was introduced, uh, I'm the head of education for Aga Khan Education Service India. A lot of you, I think, have heard of the Aga Khan Foundation. Yes. Yeah? Okay, so and a lot of people are like, oh, we haven't heard of AKSI. So, AKF, Aga Khan Foundation, is our sister concern. We all come under the broad umbrella of the Aga Khan Development Network. And I see my friends from the FIDAI Trust. Hello, how are you today? Great. So the FIDAI Trust is also under the umbrella of the Aga Khan Development Network. As was told in our introduction, we have uh, hundreds of schools uh, under AKS in 13 countries, in mostly developing uh, countries, and India being one of them. And in India, of course, we have our schools in Maharashtra, Gujarat, and Telangana. And we have uh, very interesting units called the daycare centers or the REAP centers all across rural Gujarat. And these are basically pre-primary centers. So what are we doing at uh, AKDN? I'm sure you're all thinking, okay, you run all these schools, what's your mission and vision? So like the rest of you, it's all about quality education. The story is very similar. We are struggling uh, with, uh, you know, we have to put our ads out in the same newspapers. We have to go to the same recruiters, looking for teachers, looking for school leaders. And what we want to do is provide the best possible quality. Uh, our clientele is varies. We uh, cater to the low middle class in our rural areas. Of course, the fees is extremely low. And in some of our schools, we are able to charge a slightly higher fees. But the struggles are the same. How do we achieve quality? Now, one of the documents which really informs our whole school improvement uh, process is a report which came out in 2010. And the reason I'm going to share a little bit about this because it, it refers to this whole beautiful uh, title that Aarti has chosen about global trends. This study in 2010 looked at school systems, 30 school systems across the world, and I'll share the reference later on. And they tried to identify what are the levers of change, which means, in other words, ki kya kya karne se our school systems improve over. And uh, I'm just going to quickly go through the list, but before I do, and let's make it a little more interactive, what do you think are the key levers for school improvement? Can we pass the mics around? Yes. Thanks, Sapna. Any, any guesses? I mean, I know this is your bread and butter, but let's just hear. I would say the how aspect and the technique that you're using, the tool that you're using to enhance or provide the basic content. Can you be a bit more specific? So what are you going to change in your school to improve the way the school is working? Let's so say that um, include uh, something different. I mean, you're not going to change the content. Okay. But the how aspect of the teaching So the curriculum, process. so the way yeah, the curriculum yeah, is yeah. okay. As per Great. the present requirement of the pupils. Sure. So their way we have to, like as uh, said earlier, that mm -hmm. you have to change the how aspect in what they want to learn. How they can learn should be Fair about enough. it. Great. Thank you so much, ma'am. Anybody else? Yes. yes. I think a strong uh, leadership and basically like a strong management system is very important to bring about change okay so we have curriculum we have strong leadership you all agree with these points anything else maybe our way of thinking i'm sorry ma'am you've been trying to say something methodology so methodology again yes ma'am a way of thinking a way of thinking again i want a bit more specific what when you go and tell your teachers to change their way of thinking what are you actually telling them to do all can do if we 
help them to do their best maybe the students okay so you are you are changing the attitude of teachers towards towards students to bring about uh, school improvement all right anything else Okay. All right. Which is to include the parents. To include the parents. That's right. Yes. It's a one more thing. Uh, we have all studied in. Okay, thank you. Yes. We have all studied in our B. Ed. or D. Ed. Whatever about multiple intelligences, but uh, we should bring that aspect into the into class teaching. Okay. Understand. that uh, you can teach in different ways means bringing up different intelligences while teaching the same concept fair enough so it's another point about methodology using technology using multiple intelligences leadership i'll just take one point more and then otherwise you know we could spend the entire afternoon and i don't know arti if she's going to allow us to do that yes i think if we could just become a little more education oriented rather than result oriented Ah, okay. So moving again. So that's a very curriculum kind of centric point, right? That where we should our whole methodology rather that we should be teaching to the test, but more focusing on outcomes. Probably is that what you're saying? No, I mean to say like how people are more like you know, parents also and teachers also. They're always looking for ninety percent, eighty percent, but not Fair focusing enough. on how much is actually. Actually, so time. what 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 are the children actually learning? Last point. Ah, professional development, and that's what Parisar Asha does, doesn't it? So that's one of the key points, isn't it? So can I now share what the global trends tell us about school improvement? Yeah. So a lot of the points. So the first point is indeed to do with curriculum. Yeah, that you have to have to look at the curriculum which is being. planned implemented so what kind of methodologies are you using are you marks focused are you focused on outcomes what kind of outcomes are those age appropriate so the curriculum and for a lot of quote and quote poor performing schools you need a prescribed curriculum which is why the work parisar asha does is so so important and of course when your school is doing really well do you need prescribed lesson plans then and that's what the study says that when your school reaches that level then of course you leave it to the creativity of the teacher because if you give a expert math teacher a prescribed lesson plan what are they what is his or her reaction going to be frustration i don't i don't want to be told how to teach i already know how to teach so depending on where your school is at where your teachers are at you need to kind of give that kind of support in terms of curriculum materials another thing that the report talks about is that especially again uh, schools which are not performing very well have to have to focus on literacy and numeracy do you all agree with that yes. yeah the basics right the academic part of it is so important professional development somebody pointed out um and another thing that the report points out that more than you know infrastructure and things like that fancy buildings fancy labs it's the processes which are very very important right so we do need to for example give teachers time in the time table to actually plan to collaborate often times uh, who said that i think ma'am you said this this morning that they all go through ba ed courses but when teachers enter the classroom they've forgotten that they have to do an introduction before you start a lesson the bell rings and sometimes i see our teachers rushing out of the classroom and i said didn't you learn in your ba ed class that you have to do a recap at the end how do you check whether the children actually got what you taught but the bell is dictating how we end and start our lesson so we have to go back to the basics in terms of curriculum planning uh observation and feedback of teachers i think is very very critical which we are trying to do at the aga khan schools how many of you have a system of teacher uh, observation and feedback a systematic system can you uh, can i see a raise of hands few few and this i think is a dangerous thing if i may say so please don't take it personally but we need to have systems of observing teachers in a non threatening way You know, remember that classroom is a sacred place. We don't just barge in and give feedback and say this is right and this is wrong. But there is a way of putting competent people to 
inside classrooms, observing, collaborating with the teacher, giving feedback, and almost having a coaching and mentoring relationship with teachers. The other big thing that we do is the process of result analysis. And this is something connected to the learning gap which was being discussed earlier today. Uh, what, what does result analysis mean to you? Anybody? Performance, student performance analysis. Any guesses? So your kids sit for your, say, class three or class four mathematics first term results, right? And then you give the parent the report card. Is there a discussion in the staff room as to how the kids are doing? Are they doing better than before? Are they improving? Are they stagnating? Because this gives the feedback to the practitioner, to the teacher as well, as to whether I should continue doing what I'm doing or do I need to change my methodology. So the whole process of the teacher having time to reflect on you know, what is working, what's not working, these are the main things which bring about change in our schools and lead to school improvement. Anyway, I see that a lot of people are dozing off, so I'm going to come back to the workshop. Uh, let's come to the basic point of now, literacy. So for the Aga Khan Development Network, uh, we get a lot of gui guidance, as you know, from His Highness the Aga Khan. And his guidance has recently been that if we want our children to be successful and in today's world, they should be good at English. Do you agree? Yes. yes. Most of the teachers here are from, uh, teachers and leaders are here from English medium schools. Yes. Or even if you are from a regional language uh, school, you are teaching English, right? And English is connected to social mobility. So we at the network are now working a lot on English. And uh, we have recently, not recently actually, in the 1990s, we did a tie-up with this organization called the Phillips Academy in Massachusetts. It's a very famous kind of prep school. And they do really good professional development workshops. They did this amazing workshop on creative writing. Okay, And Jeff is going to talk a little bit more about the power of creative writing. So you, I, I know I've jumped a bit, I've jumped from school improvement to language development and now I'm talking about creative writing. But hopefully when Jeff finishes talking about the power of creative writing, you will see that, and it doesn't matter if it's just English, you can write in Hindi, in Gujarati, in Bangla, any, any language, but the power of writing is now becoming a very, very important global trend. You know, that uh, children have lost, of course, the love of writing in a lot of ways. But that's because we don't teach them to write in the right way, right? It's never really the fault of the children or the environment. It's about us adapting and changing our teaching methodology. So today, Jeff and I are trying to kind of simulate uh, a creative writing workshop. And uh, believe me when I tell you, this is something we do with kids in the classroom on a regular basis. And they come up with such original thoughts. So uh, when you, sir, were talking earlier about how do you make children think of original thoughts, that's exactly what we're trying to express in this workshop today, that how children are creative, as you said, uh, Dr. Pawan. They are original in their thoughts. But how do you create an environment? That's exactly what Jeff and I are going to try to uh, demonstrate today. I think I've spoken enough. On to you, Jeff. Thank you. Thank you. So my name is Jeff. Uh, this is my first uh, Pyrosar Asha workshop. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, today I learned that I'm Gora. <laughs> Gora Gora Chokra. <laughs> and I also learned that I may have a trendy hairstyle. Yes, yes. yes definitely do. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about creative writing. Um, a lot of times when we think about writing, why do we need to be good writers? We think, well, we need to be good writers so we do well in university because so many people get to university and can't write. Maybe when we get a job, we need to be good writers. But there's other reasons, too, for writing. We can look at writing as something like an art form, uh, a way to express our emotions. Um, in the literature, it says that children have a natural interest in writing even from a young age. And there's lots of reasons to include creative writing in the classroom, and those include to entertain. It can be a form of artistic expression, to explore the functions and values of writing itself, to stimulate the imagination. It can clarify your own thinking. 
It can help you search for your own identity and also just to learn to read and write as well. So there's lots of good reasons to include creative writing in our classrooms. Um, and just in keeping with the theme of the conference uh, of the workshop Menard, uh, for Tomorrow's Better World, it's of utmost importance that students participate in activities where they have all the possibility to shine. And this really reflects what um, Dr. Sudhir was saying, that there's activities like sports, for example. Oftentimes there's a winning team. There's one or two kids that are amazing at football or whatever it is. And then the rest of them are just kind of participating. But creative writing is something where everyone really has the chance to shine. Um, also, we're looking to move away from traditional classroom techniques to do a wide range of activities. And it has been found in the literature that creative writing is exciting and interesting for students as well. Uh, teachers need to be actively involved. It's been found as well. Uh, Trisha mentioned the Andover Breadloaf, and they came to India, and they came to some of our to one of our schools, and we had a week long conference with them, and it was great. We did all sorts of creative writing activities uh, with students, but also with our teachers. Uh, and it was a lot of fun, we learned a lot. We also did some team teaching where some of the international teachers from the United States, Kenya, Pakistan, um, they teamed up with some of our local teachers here to teach some creative writing activities. Um, so during the week, it was really exciting. There was never a dull moment. We all got to share our work and would like to recreate one of those activities here today. Um, the activity we're going to do, it's called At My Table. And so uh, one good thing about this activity, it's something that you'll enjoy. It's something that kids can enjoy. I think from third grade and up, it would be appropriate. And it's a good way to teach adjectives. So I'm going to give a tiny English lesson and just ask who can tell me the definition of an adjective. Anyone? Very good. Describing words that tells us something about the noun. So when we do this activity, I want you to think about using as many describing words as you can, because that's a way that you can make your own writing better. Students can improve their writing by adding adjectives. A lot of times we just write to write, and we, we forget about making it you know, more descriptive. So that's one way. Another way that we can improve our writing is by talking about the five senses. So can someone tell me what one of the senses are? Sight. Smell. It's a room full of teachers, so everyone got them very fast. Very good. Um, OK. so. We're gonna go through the five senses when we do this activity. Uh, I would love for everyone to do this activity in English, but it, you don't have to do it in English. That's the English teacher and me. Um, if you feel more comfortable doing it in another language, um, Hindi, Marathi, Mala Marathi Balaila Averte. <laughs> That's fine. Whatever you feel most comfortable with, okay? So, at the top, everyone has something to write on, right? You have a notepad or a notebook. I'd like you to take that out now, and everyone's going to participate. Everyone. So take out. Hello. Yeah, does everybody have, yeah, you'll have to really write now. Don't worry, it's going to be fun. Okay, so there's a booklet also uh, which you can use and if anybody needs a hard surface to write on, just let us know. But I think your bags all have a, a, a book which you can keep the paper on. Yes. Aarti, are you not going to take part in this activity? Okay.
All right. Okay. So I'm just doing a check. Everybody has their piece of paper. Yeah. That's what we do, right? The teacher in me. I started my career as a middle school uh, social studies teacher. So I can't get rid of that. Everybody has a piece of paper. Do you have a surface to keep the paper on? Yeah? All right. All set. Okay, Jeff, yes. Okay, so at the top of your page, I would like you to write, at my table. At my table. And as Jeff said, if you feel more comfortable writing in another language, please feel free to do that. Because this is about creative writing, whatever language you're comfortable with. And creative writing can be used not only in language classes. Creative writing can also be in science classes, math classes, any, you can be creative yourself with how you incorporate it into your class. So I don't, if you're not a language teacher, I want you to think of other ways for your own classes that you could also incorporate this because creative writing can be used in a wide variety of classes, okay? So for this activity, at my table, what you're gonna do, the first thing is you're gonna think of a time where you had a meal and it was a meal that was a very important meal to you for some reason. You shared it with family or friends or people important to you. It's a meal that really sticks in your head as something very important a really nice memory that you have of a meal. So I'd like everyone to just think a minute of what meal they're going to choose. So when I did this activity, I did a Christmas dinner that I shared with my family and my grandparents. Um, one of my students who I did this with did a meal that he had uh, at Chow Pati on the beach with some of his family. So. It can be creative, but it needs to be a meal that you shared with other people that was important to you. So does everyone have one in mind? Yes. Okay, so everyone has their meal in mind, right? So you have at my table written at the top. Okay, the first thing you're gonna do now is you're gonna close your eyes. So the first sense that you gave me was sight. So I want you to take yourself back to when you were having that meal, wherever it was. So close your eyes and think about everything that you can see around you. You're now back at that table, having that meal. So what do you see? If you look down at the table itself, what kind of things do you see? Look to your left and to your right. With your eyes closed. Remember, you're back in time. All the things that you see. Anything that you see that's not at the table, in the distance, around you. OK, now I'd like you to open your eyes and write. Write everything you saw. Don't worry about structure. Just write everything right away. So you don't forget, just, you can write it as sentences, groups of words, whatever you feel most comfortable We're with. We're not gonna cut marks for spelling errors, so please don't worry. There's no right or wrong here.
Remember to use the adjectives, the describing words. Huh? I can tell we have a group which loves to write, <laughs> which is wonderful. Can we move to the next sense? Yeah? So what is the next sense on the board? Smell. Smell. So once again, please close your eyes. Close your eyes and go back to that time you're at the table or anywhere having a meal with your loved ones, friends, could be family, and think about all the smells. Go back in time, think about all the smells. Same location. Same occasion. Same occasion. Same location. So first you wrote about the sights, what you saw, right? Now you are talking about the smells. What kind of smells did you have? They could be coming in from the kitchen, from outside the window, from the table, if you're at a restaurant. Think about all the different smells. Yes, and then you can open your eyes and you can start writing them down. Remember again, it's adjectives, yeah? You have to describe the different smells. Well, you can write as much as you, anything you want, but adjectives help. So let's move on now to the third. So if everyone can close their eyes again. So please close your eyes. Eyes closed. You're back at that table sharing that meal and now think of all the things that you touch what's in your hands what do you feel 
Are you touching any of the food? Does the food have different textures? What else are you touching? Anything on the table that you touch? And how do those things feel? Okay, so open your eyes and now write everything, everything that you just touch and describe how it felt. such a joy to see all of you enjoying your writing. Let's move, however, to the next sense. The next sense is the fun one, right? We're at a table after all, taste. So if you can just close your eyes once again and try to remember the different tastes at that particular meal. What were the different flavors that you could taste? Something that you sipped out of a glass, or a cup, or a bowl, or something you ate from the plate. How did it taste? So if you can again think about those tastes, and once you've, you, you're reminded of all those lovely tastes, then you can open your eyes and write them down. But spend some time remembering the different tastes. Okay, so let's do the final one now. So if you can close your eyes one last time. So you're back at that meal. 
the food is being served, possibly eaten, what kind of things do you hear? What sounds are there? What sort of sounds are coming from the table? Things that you hear around the room? Any noise that's possibly coming in from the outside? Okay, please open your eyes and write everything down now that you just heard at your table. Okay, so you should be finishing up now. You're gonna write one last line. At the very bottom of your page, you're gonna write, I feel, and then one word or two. And it's feeling in terms of an emotion that you felt, sharing this meal, being with your loved ones. How did you feel? If you had to summarize it in one or two words. So write, I feel, So this time it's the emotion. Remember the last couple of times it was sight, smell, touch, taste, hearing. And now you're going back again to that time. And how do you feel? The emotional part of it, yes. Uh, so how am I feeling about it right now or how I felt back then? Back then. Back then, back then, yeah. We're still back in time. So how did I feel at that point of time? One or two words, that's it. And now, just take one minute to read through what you wrote. If you want to make tiny changes, like maybe add a period or something like that, that's okay, but don't rewrite anything. But just, just read what you wrote. Okay, so how about a volunteer that would like to share with us what they wrote? Please. Okay. And if you can just introduce yourself as well, ma'am. Yes. I'm Rajni Bhatti, principal of Gunanak Mission High School, Andheri East. Yes, whatever I have, they told to visualize, I visualize that. 
and I have written it. At 31st December, at my table, I was having meal with my family on 31st December. We had platter of starters, delicious chicken, soft noodles, fluffy rotis and at last we had a tasty ice cream. We were sitting on a nice table, the aroma of food was divine. Whole room was filled with the aroma of tandoori chicken. Oh wow, the Chinese was mesmerizing. The soft cushion of the chair and soft table cover and the table mat were a little rough in texture. The smooth plain plate and cold spoon and forks. I picked up serving spoon. The hot soup and starters were very crispy and the spicy chicken with soft and fluffy rotis were unbeatable. Above all, the salad was so taste tangy and cold was delicious. All family members had pressure eating. I had extra food. I am full. I ate double the food today. No more food for one week. These were the noises we heard. And at last they wrote one word, I feel blessed. Very nice. Let's give a round of applause. Thank you thank so you, much for you. sharing. Thank you very much. That, that was, was beautiful. Lovely. And I love the descriptive words. Even the spoon, I could feel that cold spoon yeah, in my hand. That absolutely. was really nice. So I think we only have time for one more person to share. I would love to hear everyone's. Okay, Hello. Hi. I'm I'm from Kanpur and I'm a facilitator at Natspace. It's a storytelling come child developmental education center at Kanpur. Lovely. Um, so at my table, a meal with Bunny, a best friend at Candy's Bandra. And this is just yesterday. <laughs> um, there's a counter with variety of desserts to choose from on my left. Bunny is sitting right next to me on a high bar chair, what appears to be like a high raised, at what appears to be like a high raised marble counter. On the table, we have two trays full of scrumptious dishes. Candies is a fast food joint. Mostly all the food items listed on the menu were displayed, so I could smell Malai Tikka predominantly because it was right there in front of me. I could also smell a lot of cheesy flavors. Cheese flavors, not cheesy flavors. <laughs> Cheese. And, um, and the odor of frying something in oil. Yummy, yummy smells. Touch the first. The first thing I touched was my fork to poke that little piece of chicken or ghani tikka on my plate. The chicken was extremely tender but with bones so I used my ha hands to carefully take the meat of the bones. I then picked up my glass of chilled watermelon juice which felt rather cold after the hot piece of chicken. I tasted exotic spices in the Afghani chicken, mostly herbs and little bit of spices. The other dish was chicken lollipop with an explosive flavor of cheese and garlic. Sounds. People around chattering on different tables, a cricket match on the TV with, um, uh, and sorry, a loud chair of chair, a, a loud sound of a chair falling, and a woman and women from that table gasping, and then and then they started giggling away. <laughs> I feel extremely satisfied with the company and the meal I just had. Thank you. That was nice. Beautiful. Glad you had this after lunch. Yes. So what I was noticing going around was that people had written it in different styles. Yours almost sounded like a food review that they would probably be glad to have on their website. And then some people wrote it more like a journal entry, the memory of their experience. I saw other people had groups of words, of adjectives, of descriptive words, and that was fine. Some were a lot more poetic than others, and there's no right or wrong, right? Everyone produced what I can see looks like beautiful work. And I'd just like you to think about this this type of activity, it's so easy to do, right? How much preparation does it take for the teacher? Not that much, right? And the kids are able to learn about adjectives and hopefully improve their writing as you do more of these activities in the classroom. Also, maybe some of the quieter kids that don't talk as much have a chance to read their work and, and finally be you know, appreciated publicly for that. So it's a great opportunity, I think, to implement in the classes. Um, I think we'd also like to share a video we have time. Just it's. Uh, I did this activity with a group of fifth graders at Diamond Jubilee High School in Mazga, one of our schools, and the kids loved it. This particular child asked, was begging to share his work. He read it 
three times, once to me alone, once in the class, and then invited me back to the class to read again. So I thought that I should share with you guys too. But it's just to also show you that I think a lot of times we underestimate kids and think, you know, fourth graders won't really be able to get this, right? But this is a fifth grade class, and you'll see that he did really well. And they all did, actually. I'd like to read their sound to the class. Okay. It's a nice, loud voice and clear, right? At the table, I see my favorite delicacy, like butter chicken, chicken. So you can see the kids loved it, right? And they really enjoyed the creativity. They all had much different ones, like I said, and that's just one example. We don't have time to really show more than that today. Um, did you want to give it? Yes. So I hope you all enjoyed the activity. And I think what comes out is that everybody <laughs> will have a unique essay, right? Am I right? There is a tendency, sir, even with our essays, they all write the same things. But when you give activities like this, and you're telling them to reflect on a special moment in their life, it's going to be original because my experience is different from yours, yours is different from hers. And when you give these kind of prompts, it forces them to kind of reflect on various aspects. What were the things I heard? What did I see? What did I touch? Especially young children even talk about the roughness of the table cover right or the smoothness of the plate one of you spoke about the cold touch of the spoon these are the things or usually we don't write about am i right but when you give these kind of prompts you know there's a writer in all of us and kids are happy we should as jeff said we cannot underestimate children some of them write poems some of them write in prose so we hope this was useful to you and there are more writing activities which you can do we have in the booklet that you have in your bag, we've given a list of other creative writing activities. We would like to hear from you. We can share our contact information later on with you. So do it with your kids, do it with your teachers as well. And uh, we wish you a wonderful time in the world of creative writing. Jeff, anything else? No, that's everything. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you.